she's like, we're gonna have to do an emergency C-section. And I'm just looking like, the lady has her hand inside of me holding everything up while they're pushing me to the operating room. She's like, oh my gosh, like, I don't know how to use these new machines. And I'm just like, this lady can't be serious right now. Somebody needs to come in here who knows how to use this machine because all I'm thinking is, as in tell me what I can cut her open. And I'm thinking in my head too, I'm not sleeping yet. I'm not out yet. Hi, Bobby. everybody welcome back to my channel we are here in full swing i have my hair done um put a little lashes on i feel really really good and i thought that this is the opportune time to come and share my birth story with you guys as you guys know baby is hair um i've shown her face or her side profile in a few videos but i'm trying to see how how I'd like to navigate her going forward because as you know on the internet you can't really control who has access to whatever aspects of your baby that you post but obviously when you know the camera is far from her I have no issues holding her up and everything but um I don't really know I'm treading lightly when it comes to just blasting her on the internet but she is a beautiful beautiful girl and her name is Mia Jade as you guys probably already know Right now she has the hiccups because I just fed her earlier and that's been her thing. She has the hiccups when I feed her. She is three weeks and two days old today and it's been very, very blissful. Blissful having her hair and having her early but I have to share the story with you guys of how we got to this point, right? So, um, let's get into it. So, everything was progressing like normal and i remember joking and saying that and i think even in one of my videos i was joking and saying oh my gosh i wanna um work the night and have her the following morning and boy have i realized that i really do speak things into existence over my reality and as much as that was the plan to um work to the last point and then have her because all the time my co-workers kept asking me you know um when are you gonna take mater maternity leave and i'm like well i don't really have any maternity leave planned i just wanted to work and just have her the next day and that be it because i wasn't sure how much time i would get at home and i didn't want to cut into the time that i would get spending it before i had baby if i was only gonna get like a certain amount of time at home so i didn't take any maternity leave right so uh june 15th i worked the night and I'm leaving work the morning. I had to stay over a little bit because there was a huddle, a morning meeting that my manager does from time to time and it ended up running for a little bit longer. And I was on a one-to-one, -one, so I could not leave when the shift ended. If I had the opportunity to leave, my plan was to come home, take my vitamins, eat some breakfast, and then go to my appointment because that's how I'd naturally do it. I've also left work and gone straight to an appointment, but when I do that, I'd normally have food that I would eat before and take my medication from like, 5 6 a.m right because i didn't plan to go straight to the appointment i didn't do that like i normally would so um you know because the meeting ended up running late i ended up having to leave and go straight to my appointment because i didn't have enough time to come home and do all of that when i got to the appointment you know you drop off your urine as usual and i told um the medical assistant i'm like listen when you check my blood pressure it's probably going to be a little bit high because i had not taken the medication since yesterday morning this time she's like okay that's fine sure enough she takes my blood pressure and it is a little bit high this point we are 37 weeks solid not a day over not a day before a full 37 weeks my doctor had told me the week before that she was going to schedule an induction in two weeks which would have meant that she would have induced me at 38 weeks mentally i was kind of prepared because i'm like okay well i have two weeks to prepare for that so this appointment that i was going to was the appointment that I thought was going to confirm the date when I was supposed to go to the hospital at 38 weeks and the time. She did my blood pressure. It was a little bit high. It wasn't a little bit high. It was 160 over something. I'm like, oh my goodness. But I told her it was going to be high. So I'm like, you want to check it again? She checked it again. It was still a little bit high. Um, you know, they strapped me up in their monitoring baby on the little monitor because I had been doing that for the last month and a half or so. 
they strap me up and then my doctor comes in and she's like, all right, we got to give you a little swab, the vagina and the, you know, the butt. And she did that while I'm, and then I monitored and then she's like, you know, um, your blood pressure is high. So I said, I know, but I'm explaining to her that I did not take the medication yet. And naturally it would have before I come into my appointment. And she's like, honestly, your blood pressure has been high throughout the pregnancy. And we are, hi honey, we are trying to prevent preeclampsia. And I think it's a little bit too high because before we had been monitoring it, I've been checking my blood pressure at home for weeks, the entire pregnancy basically. And you know, she was letting me know, listen, if anything over 140 over 90, we got to do something about that. But the week before to a 36 weeks, she had went up on my blood pressure medication. So I should have been fine had I just taken the medication. But you know, while she's, mo she's talking to me, she's like, Janine, honestly, baby is 37 weeks. She looks great. She's measuring fine. Everything is okay with her. I want to take her out today because I don't want to send you home for you to take the medication and think that okay everything is gonna be okay and the next thing I know you're in the hospital because of preeclampsia I don't want to take any chances and I think I'm gonna send you to the hospital I'm sitting in the office scared shitless because I'm like what is going on I literally came here to find out a date for next week that I'm gonna have baby I did not plan to have her today my hair is in a bun. Nothing is done to my hair. These are all the things I'm thinking. Nothing is done to my hair. I don't have the hospital bag hair with me. What's going on? So she was like, I'm thinking, you know, do I send you home first to like get your bag and like get yourself together or do I just send you to the hospital? And I'm like, if you, she's like, if I send you home, are you going to go home, pick up the bag and go back to the hospital? And I'm like, yes. And she's like, honestly, I, I don't want to take the chance because she sent patients home before and they spent the entire day at home and didn't go to the hospital until nighttime knowing their condition but i wouldn't have done that knowing how serious preeclampsia is and knowing that my blood pressure was higher than i had ever seen it in the office but she wasn't taking any chances she wrote the hospital's address on a piece of paper and gave me and she was like listen eat the food that you have because i had bought something to eat for breakfast she said eat the food that you have take the medication and go to the hospital she's like uber there but go now because the hospital wasn't far from her office and so I'm, like I said, scared shitless. I'm texting my sister. I'm going to the hospital right now. She's at work. She can't read the messages because she's at work and she only has access to her phone when she's on her break. I'm like, do I text my friend Jules? Because I gotta go to the hospital. I texted her dad and I'm like, listen, I'm going to the hospital, baby is coming. I think I texted him when I got to the hospital though because I thought when I got to the hospital, they were gonna check me, make sure that everything is okay and if, I, if it wasn't an issue, they would have sent me home. I was so silly thinking that because my doctor literally said, I'm sending you to the hospital and later on I'm coming to take the baby out. As in, we're having the baby today. I'm coming and I'm taking her today. So for me to think that, okay, let me just go to the hospital. They're going to check me out and they're going to send me home. And I'm not going to have to call them and tell them we're having the baby today was wild. So I went to the hospital and then I did that. You know, I texted and I'm like, listen, I'm in the hospital. Go to the house, pick up my bags and come and bring them here because my doctor was like listen just get him to bring the bags go straight to the hospital you know when they checked me in you know they're processing you they put me on the labor and delivery floor whatever and we're just there we're just there chilling you know they're they're monitoring me they gave me what is it magnesium hi baby you're so mesmerized they gave me, I think magnesium let's see what magnesium is because I don't want to be giving out any false information here I think it was magnesium. It makes you so hot, but it lowers your blood pressure. I think it's magnesium. <laughs> She's smiling. Oh my goodness. Hi, sweetheart. You love hearing me talk? I love you. <laughs> I love her. I love her. Anyways, they gave me magnesium. That's that stuff that makes you hot. And they told me it was going to make me hot, but it made me hot instantly as soon as they gave it to me i was hot um so they gave me that to kind of control my blood pressure i was fluctuating because i'm nervous like a dog because obviously i didn't plan to go into labor that day so now when i'm there and i see that they're this is for real i'm changing into a hospital gown i'm not leaving here today my doctor had examined me at her office and i was one centimeter and i was bleeding i'm like mm -mm, i'm staying i'm not going home baby is coming today so now i texted dad and i'm like listen baby is coming to the hospital and I also texted my friend but I texted my friend Jules when they were done with everything you know and um she came by too and she, god 
she was amazing throughout the whole process i'm telling you when i saw her i hugged her and i cried i cried oh my goodness i cried because i was so grateful um you know to just have her there i was scared poopless but let me tell you all about the labor right so i go in they they started the pitocin about one o'clock i as you, if you guys watch the labor labor video which will be before this one you see i have a timeline of everything i'm telling you guys the time and everything because i didn't have my camera i didn't have anything so i was recording it on my phone i'm like telling you guys what time it is what's happening i think they started the pitocin at about 1 p.m they started the pitocin i'm completely fine right? i feel the contractions but i'm fine so i'm like i think maybe i have a higher pain tolerance because i know that i do have a high pain tolerance but my doctor ended up coming and she she sent her PA to break the water but when the PA came she was like listen it's your choice if you want to try and labor a little bit more and then see if the water will break on its own we could do that so I'm like yeah I'd like to do that I ended up falling asleep and I woke up to my OB being in the room and she was like you had me come all this way to come break your water <laughs> laughed and then she broke the water that was not a pleasurable experience at all and I don't think I expected it to be because when she examined me it hurt but breaking the water was not pleasurable it's not the worst thing in the world but it's just not pleasurable she broke the water and i'm like okay i can feel it running out and everything she goes away she comes back she checks me again i'm not any more pain but i can feel the contractions like tightening a little bit i don't have i don't have epidural or anything at this point right so she's like how are you feeling and i'm like i feel fine she examines me again and she's like hmm it's a little bit more blood than i'd want to see so she's just she, she thought maybe it's a placental abruption and I'm just looking like, oh my god, why is this taking a turn? What is going on? We're there. She leaves again. She comes back and she's like, how is the pain? And I'm like, I'm not really feeling any pain. I'm just... And she's like, no. She's like, the amount of Pitocin that you're getting, you're supposed to be not this comfortable. I'm just laying down, chilling, eating a bonbon. She's like, you're not supposed to be um, this comfortable. Let me check and see what's going on. She goes and she examines me and uh, we are in the middle of a cord prolapse. I'm going to put a picture on the screen of what that looks like. The umbilical cord is coming out first. She has a look on her face and I'm like, what is going on? And she's like, I do not want you to freak out or something like that. She said, she's like, we're going to have to do an emergency C-section. And I'm just looking like, excuse me, what? At this time, her dad was there and everything. An emergency c-section i didn't plan for that but at one point um while she was examining me examining me back and forth when she thought it was a placental abruption she's like listen now we have c-section on the table it's not a short thing that you're gonna get a c-section and i was joking and i was saying to her honestly if you if you put it on the table that's what's gonna end up happening because honestly throughout this entire pregnancy everything that you've said is what we've gone through and she's like no don't say that and i'm like i'm telling you that's what's gonna end up happening here we are that is exactly what ended up happening so you know i'm glad that she kind of prepared me before she was like listen we're gonna have to do an emergency section just like how you watch it in Grey's anatomy or any one of those hospital shows that is exactly how it was happening she's looking to her pa and she's like listen get some help and get it now the lady has her hand inside of me because she can't take it out because they broke the water everything is naturally coming out umbilical cord baby everything is coming out the lady has her hand inside of me holding everything up while they're pushing me to the operating room um now i'm laying flat out on my back and i'm looking up at so many people around me i'm getting nervous she, um my doctor's asking me you know where's her dad and i'm like you know he just stepped outside she's like call him and call him now i called him i'm like listen you gotta come you gotta come now i'm getting an emergency c-section so come right now um i don't even know when he came back because everything happened so quickly i remember going into the operating room and i'm asking where's my doctor because i'm seeing everybody else but i'm not seeing her and she's like listen janine i'm right here you're fine baby is fine i just need to take her out to make sure that you stay okay and she stays okay as well but everything is okay you know you can relax and that really calmed me down a little bit because out of everybody else there she's the only person that i know she's the only person that i'm comfortable with she's the only person that i want to deal with I need her to take the baby out but i also trust her enough to know that if something is wrong she's going to tell me so she's there and everybody is suited and booted and they put up the blue thing in front of me this is all i'm seeing put up the blue thing in front of me a lady is by my right side here saying that hi honey what's the matter hi why are we tensing up like that look at the load of baby scratch oh it's gone hi baba let's move on this hair the lady is on the right of me and she's like oh my gosh like i don't know how to use these new machines 
And I'm just like, this lady can't be serious right now. Not knowing how to use these new machines is one thing. But not knowing how to use the new machine and vocalizing that while I'm laying down on this table is another thing. Somebody needs to come in here who knows how to use this machine because all I'm thinking is this is going left. This is going left. I remember at one point in my head, I'm just like, Janine, it's okay, calm down. You trust your doctor. She's here and she's gonna make sure everything is okay. Baby is fine, you're fine. If you're freaking out, that means your blood pressure is gonna go up and you do not want that. The lady's putting my hands on the two little things that you stretch your hands out on, you know, and then they're putting the little thing over your nose that makes you fall asleep. And I just remember hearing my doctors, I remember them squirting the thing on my belly, that little thing that they squirt before they cut you open. I felt that, it felt very, very warm. And the last thing I heard was my doctor saying, tell me when I can go. As in, tell me when I can cut her open. And I'm thinking in my head too, I'm not sleeping yet, I'm not out yet. I'm I gonna feel her slice me open. I'm telling you, I was freaking out in my head. I was going through it in my head. And I just feel like that, just, everything just did not go as planned. Even though I joked about like working to the last day and like leaving work and having the baby the next morning, which is exactly what ended up happening. I did not expect to get a C-section, but also the experiences that I've heard other people talking about how bad their C-section experience was, I cannot relate to that because I did not have a bad experience. You know, they cut me open, I wake up, I'm stitched up and there's a glue, there's a jelly like clear glue on top of it my friend took a picture of it but i think it might be too much unless i crop it and like pop it on the screen so you guys can see it's kind of dark too they glued me up um it just i wasn't in pain because obviously i was on pain medication but also it just felt like there was pressure on the lower part of my belly it did not feel like it was cut open just pressure no pain um so you know we're in the hospital for three days that night you know somebody came and cleaned me up and everything and um you know, I have a catheter in at this point and everything. Um, I don't know if I got an epidural. Do you get an epidural when you get general anesthesia? Because naturally when they're doing a C-section, it's the one where you're awake. So I'm thinking it's local anesthesia. I got general. I went to sleep. For real. You know, and when I woke up, you know, I'm in the recovery room. And the little, I see my friend and that's when, you know, I see Jules. And that's when I hug her and I'm crying. And I'm like, oh my God, thank you for being here. Or whatever I said, I don't know. And then her dad is sitting on the, on the, in a chair on the end and I'm like, Where, where's the baby? Is the baby okay? And he's like, yeah, they have her in the nursery. So I'm like, why are you here? If they have her in the nursery, why are you back here? I'm Now I'm freaking out because I wake up. The last thing I remember um, before I, I'm going to sleep is them saying that they're going to cut me open, basically. And I wake up and I don't see baby and everybody is chilling. What is going on? Is everything okay? I'm thinking the absolute worst until he tells me that, you know, baby is fine. She's in the nursery. She's okay. And then, you know, he goes there. And then the next thing I know, they're pushing her in a little thing. You know, she's coming and they're rolling her in the little thing. And I can see just her moving a little bit, like her head moving a little bit. She's making some little cooing sound. Oh, you guys, I love her. I'm literally so obsessed. I can't remember this obsession when I had my first daughter. I know I loved her to death, though. But like being older and having this experience again, it's something special. I'll tell you that. Let's put her down. But yeah, I see them rolling baby in bassinet basically. And she's just moving her little body around. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that is my baby. I had a baby and I don't know what to do. I had her a week earlier than the scheduled induction, but also three weeks earlier than the due date. My due date would have been two days ago, the 6th. And I'm just in awe and in love and forgot that I just went through all of that because at this moment, it's so rewarding and it's so worth it. And I'm so happy because I can see my baby, okay? The lady's taking, the nurse is taking her out of all the blankets and everything and she's so tiny. And I'm in shock because she's so small. I used to feel her foot on my side and I'm looking at her little foot and I'm like, I knew these little knees were, were skinny, so tiny. You know, she, she was born four pounds, 10 ounces, a tiny, tiny girl. Now she's a little over five pounds because the last appointment that I went to, which was like two weeks ago, she was, um, or a week and a half ago, probably. She was five pounds solid. Um, so now, you know, we're, we're giving her formula and the breast milk together and she's doing great she's fine she's healthy safe and well i'm healthy safe and well and i'm so grateful at this point i'm not i'm not experiencing any pain from the incision site sometimes there's like a little tightness on one side or initially there was a little burning on the left side here and there or if i stood for too long or if i did anything i would feel that 
um they put me on ibuprofen to go home so i wasn't on any strong medication and, and the ibuprofen was really working for me and i did not take them every day i took them when i feel like i just exhausted myself and i did too much one day and um that was it like i have so many left in there right now but right now i'm doing good baby is doing good we're here we're we're, we're healthy and safe recovering nicely she's gaining weight i'm getting better and i have a few more weeks left at home with her and i'm really looking forward to just soaking up all the newborn everything and just loving on her because while i didn't plan for a baby she is a perfect perfect girl and i'm so excited to be her mom and i'm so excited that i'm able to make milk she's a talker I'm so excited that my body is able to make milk to nourish her because the first two days in the hospital I wasn't making any milk and I was stressed out you know I'm like I'm not gonna be able to feed her but I'm not one of those moms too who's just like oh my gosh if it's not breast milk I'm gonna lose my mind no as long as baby is fed healthy and safe I'm completely fine and I'm just so grateful for the experience I don't know that I'm gonna go through that again but do not hold me to that because we're making plans and God is wiping so anything could happen but i'm so grateful for my baby and i'm so grateful that she's here and that i'm recovering nicely and that i had a positive experience even though it was an emergency c-section that i did not plan for i'm just very grateful if i've forgotten anything i will add a load of things here and there on the screen because um i should have done this before but also i was recovering and loving on my baby like i didn't have time to think about that but now that i'm feeling better and i'm in better spirits i'm like what better time than now anyways that's it for my labor and delivery story time what my experience was like what i went through uh if you are going into labor anytime soon expect anything yes i didn't have a birth plan yes have your birth plan if you want to but just know that things could change and be okay with that and have a way to calm yourself down if things change for the worse because sometimes it does change but also everything always works out in your best interest everything always works out for you nothing is happening to you it's happening for you and that's what really got me through this experience but that's it for my labor and delivery story time thank you guys for watching and i hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you guys in more videos maybe more baby content here and there more just regular lifestyle things with me as i go through my everyday life but thank you guys for watching